faith, when a child reaches the age of eight, it's very common for the child to pray out aloud in a congregation. I remember my first time. I wore a yellow dress with pink dots and pretty lace around the sleeves. I walked up to the stage and my heart beat so fast that I thought it would burst. As I sat down, I saw the microphone and I started to shake uncontrollably. And I heard the signal to begin. My mouth opened, but nothing came out. My mouth opened again, and a sound came through, but it got stuck at the top of my throat. And I tried desperately to push it out, and I finally spit it out. Oh, what a relief. But after a few words, it happened again. What was supposed to take five to seven minutes took 20 minutes. Afterwards, a child is usually rewarded with money. I was looking forward to attracting some of my own after. But instead, what I got was, did you practice enough? Next time, do better, okay? It was at that point that I realized that there was something wrong with the way I spoke. And I started to form hidden meaning, such as, no one will like me if I speak up. Stuttering is a communication challenge where the flow of speech is broken up by repetitions, prolongations, and abnormal stoppages of sound. It is estimated that 300,000 Canadians are unable to order their favorite food, express their feelings, or even ask for what they want because of their speech. In fact, I was convinced that I would have a career where speaking was not a requirement. And I became the queen of synonyms, where if a word coming up with S, T, P, K came up, I would figure out another word that would come up before that other word comes up with S, T, K, P, or M. For example, Wednesday or Tuesday, t -t Tuesday became, uh, you know the day before Wednesday? That would work better. The problem, though, is that there are no synonyms for towns, countries, cities, or even people's names. Now, this could continue for so long. When I was in university, I had to present to my classmates. And I realized I couldn't keep on avoiding and using these little tricks. And so I realized I need to do something here. Growing up in Kenya, I didn't have access to speech therapy. So I was grateful that we had the Institute of Stuttering Treatment and Research right here at the University of Alberta, also known as ISTAR. I learned speech management techniques. I learned in clinic how to introduce myself to a group. I learned how to make a phone call that I'd never done before, a simple phone call that I couldn't even do. I learned how to do that. But as soon as I left clinic and went into my own environment, I defaulted to my old habits of avoiding speaking. You see, I'd gone into speech therapy with the mindset that I'd be cured. I missed the part where they said, uh-uh, you have to implement and practice. And as I continued going into my own environment, I kept on avoiding. It bothered me that even after learning fluency skills to mitigate my stutter, why was I still avoiding speaking situations? And it's at that point that we make a decision. Yeah, that didn't work for me. And we go to our old habits. And that almost happened to me until I came across Neuro Linguistic Programming, also known as NLP. With that, for me, it was a window into how humans behave. And I finally understood why I was avoiding speaking situations. In NLP, 
I was introduced to Robert Dill's neurological levels model. In that model, he says that our brain has different levels of thinking and being. And when we're working to change our behavior, we need to address it at different levels. So from a psychological point of view, we have five different levels. Now you'll notice that the chairs on the stage, the colors correspond to what you see on the screen. So the first level is environment. Environment is your basic level. This answers the question, when, where, and with whom. The next level is behaviors. Behaviors are the specific actions that you take in that environment. This answers the question, what? What are you doing, where, when, and with whom? The next level is capabilities. These are the knowledge and skills that you bring through your behaviors into your environment. This answers the question, how? How are you doing it? Your next level is beliefs and values. Beliefs guide your behavior. They also deny or support your capabilities. Also, if something happens in your environment, you form meaning behind it, like the way I did at the age of eight. This answers the question, why? And the next one is identity. Identity answers the question, who? Who are you? Who am I about in this world? Your identity shapes the beliefs that you have, but the beliefs also shape your identity. Now, our reality is based on these different levels. And this is how I experienced my world before. Identity. I'm a stutterer. I believe I'm inadequate. I'm not capable of singing, but I can sing. Don't ask me how, but it's impossible to stutter when one sings. I could sing my heart out because that was the time I felt most fluent. Come to think of it, I could have been a singer. I behaved in a way where I avoided speaking situations because I didn't want to be embarrassed. My environment was filled with individuals around me who would speak up for me and finish my sentences. Did you notice how my identity, as I'm a stutterer, influences all the other levels? Let's do another one. Of an individual who has the following identity. I'm unhealthy and overweight. I believe it's difficult to lose weight. I mean, who can live on salad and fruit for the rest of their lives? I'm not capable of cooking all those healthy recipes that we see on Instagram. I don't even know where to start cooking healthy or exercising or meal planning. Oh, my behavior in the evenings, those darn night snacks. Mm -mm. You know, having a family, it's so difficult to cook for myself separately and then for them. I don't have time for that. What if we changed or we helped this individual change the way this, they saw themselves as I am healthy? And if they kept on thinking that I am healthy, don't you think that would influence their behaviors? In his book, Dilts explains that when an individual or even an organization is going through extreme difficulty or chaos or massive change, these levels help us figure out whether new behaviors are required in that environment or new capabilities have to be developed to generate the behaviors required in that environment or beliefs have to be replaced. 
So why was it that as soon as I went into my environment, I had the fear of stuttering that would just come rushing back and I kept on avoiding? Because I had trained my brain for all those years to avoid speaking situations, I was operating on my old belief systems. In fact, I even doubted that the fluency skills that I learned would help me because I had to change the way I sound. I had to talk really slowly with gentle starts or in a sing-song voice so I could be fluent and be in control of my speech. Do you want to sound like that? Change is hard, isn't it? Because we're creatures of habit. You know, in the, in the movie, The King's Speech, King George VI stuttered. And Jeffrey Rush plays Lionel Logue, the King's Speech therapist. And at one point in the movie, he says, stuttering isn't about speech, it's about the thinking. I believe he was alluding to identity and beliefs. Was it possible for me to change the way I saw myself and believe that I could be a better speaker? Is it possible for a child to be successful in school because she identifies herself as a smart kid and believes that she does her best in every subject? Is it possible for a startup to do really well because they believe they're filling a demand and their identity is in alignment with all the other levels? Is it possible for someone to get better because they believe they can even though the medical system has given up. Is it possible? I had to try. I'm not saying what I did is a cure. In fact, I still stutter sometimes. I did this morning. But I had to change my thinking process. I did a couple of things. I stopped avoiding and I started implementing. Avoidance is a behavior that happens in every area of our life. We avoid asking for the promotion because we think we're incapable. We avoid asking for help because we think it's a sign of weakness. We avoid asking the person we've been admiring out on a date because we think that they'll say no. And it keeps on going on and on and on. Implementation is the enemy of avoidance. When, when I put the image on the screen, what do you see? Some of you may say, I see a walnut. Some of you may say, I see a face. Some of you may even say, I see a tiny pair of feet. You're all right. This is called reframing. You're reframing a situation and looking at it from a different point of view. I had to learn how to reframe, otherwise I would still keep on avoiding. I, with every implementation, I intentionally reframed my stuttering story. Before, my story was, if I stutter, I have failed. I reframed it to, if I stutter, that's okay. It's a great time to reflect back and look at how I can use my fluency skills better. Before, my st uh, story was, if I stutter, everyone will think I'm a freak. I reframed it to, my sense of self-worth comes from how I view myself, not how others view me. A simple way to reframe is, by, is to ask the question, what else could this mean that is useful or positive. And I noticed that every time I reframed, I implemented. Every time I implemented, my avoidance behavior dissipated and I created empowering belief systems. This is how I experience my world now. I identify myself as a strong, confident woman. I believe I'm whole and adequate. I'm capable of speaking my truth and inspiring others in the process. And I can sing. 
I behave in a way where I implement each and every day. I face my fear each and every day, including doing this talk today. People around me enjoy conversing with me. You've heard the phrase, mind over matter. It took me years from the time I learned speech therapy to the time I did my first speaking engagement, years. If I'd had the mindset that it's impossible to overcome my fear of stuttering, it's impossible to speak in a crowd, I would not be here in front of you today. My name is Zahin Nanji and I have a voice. Thank you.